Hi foxes, welcome back to my channel. This is Brittany from Shop Foxboro. I'm Shop Foxboro on Poshmark, Instagram, and Etsy. And today I have a vintage learning haul for you. So if learning about vintage to resell or just for personal use sounds like something that you're interested in, stay tuned. So recently I posted a video on my YouTube channel just sort of soliciting ideas um, from my viewers as to like what you would like to see in terms of reseller content. And um, I did give two suggestions. I did a very large vintage buy recently. So I bought out the inventory or as much as I could from another vintage seller in my area who I am friends with. Um, and she had some really great stuff and so I thought that I could do like smaller hauls of that and then do like keywords or like more information about vintage because I'd be doing the haul in like small parts. And that seemed to be a pretty popular idea. Most of the people who responded to the video or left me comments um, said that that would be really helpful for them for learning, you know, more about vintage, how to price it, how to sell it, etc. So I decided I would go ahead and do that as like a mini series and here we are. So if learning about vintage sounds really interesting to you or you want to know more, um, go ahead and give this video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe because this is not the last of these videos I will be doing, it is the first. And I would love to share what I know about vintage with you. And as always, if there's anything you know that I'm getting wrong, don't feel uh, don't hesitate to leave me a comment down below. I'm always interested in learning more. It's part of the reason that I watch YouTube. It's why I love engaging with you guys. I love to hear when you have knowledge um, that I don't. So I'm sharing some with you and you share some with me. It's great. So for this video, we are doing a pre-recorded video, but for my next video, I am actually going to do a YouTube live. It will be my first ever live and I am going to try to take comments and kind of go back and forth with you guys while I am going over a few pieces of vintage so that you can ask me questions and it's more like interactive. So if that is interesting, do make sure to hit subscribe. That way you'll know um, when my live is going to go live. So without any more blah blah blah, let's go ahead and dive right in. I would like to explore these pieces in a bit more detail so that you guys can walk away from this feeling like you have learned something. I'm going to scoot the camera back so that you can see the pieces a little bit better. Okay, so the first piece that I have is a blouse. It is white and it is polka dot and it has a bow tie at the neck and it is a short length um, with pearl buttons. So for this top, I am going to say it is either 40s um, or 50s. Um, I don't know that there is a maker tag in here. Usually with blouses, it will be at the back of the neck, even back then. But there were a lot of home sewers uh, back in the day. And let's not forget that even people who sewed at home, it was, they were very talented. A lot of the times, you know, they took home economics and they had some experience under their belt. So a lot of times, a lot of the homemade pieces are very nice. Um, and I would not consider it being homemade as being less valuable, especially if it's nicely constructed. So a couple of details about this top. It is full length sleeve. So this is gonna be more of like a spring top than um, summer and because of the colorway, it's not gonna be a fall top. Um, and a lot of times with the vintage blouses, they will have a raw hem down here or it will just be surged. And that usually means that the blouse was meant to be tucked in to a pair of 
trousers or a skirt or it came as part of a set uh, but in this case it does have a finished hem and you can see it is not raw so that means that it can be worn exposed a lot of times you do want to let your buyer know if it has a raw hem at the bottom that way they're just not surprised um you know when they get it and they try to wear it like with jeans untucked and there's a raw hem so just want to disclose that but it's not necessarily a flaw and it doesn't necessarily mean that the top was unfinished it's just that it was meant to be tucked in so this top has what's called a blind hem this is on white so i'm going to try and show this to you but i'm not sure it's going to work so I'm not sure if you are able to see that, but there is no visible real stitch line. You can see as this fabric is somewhat sheer, you can see the um, folded over seam on the inside, but it's not like a modern seam. So what it is, is that the inside has a serged seam and then what you do is you stitch through from the opposite side and you just grab the tiniest bit of fabric from the front and it basically tacks up the seam but in a way where there's not a visible seam line and that's a very common construction technique up until probably the 1970s once you get into the 1980s you really don't see that anymore unless it's on like a couture piece or like a really nicely made piece. You'll also see these little pearl buttons. These were very common um, for the time period. Let's see here. And they have metal. If you can see that they have metal um, loops so what the, those are called shanks so they have metal shanks and because of that you actually want to be really careful if you soak or wash pieces like this if it's just a quick wash it's usually not a problem but if you are doing like a long-term soak it can actually rust um, so a lot of times what vintage dealers and cleaners will do is they will take off all of the buttons if they have like, let's just say this had major pit stains and you needed to soak it for say 48 hours. You would want to take these buttons off before you soaked it, otherwise you risk it rusting and then bleeding onto this white fabric, which is, would be very bad. From the flow of this fabric and just the drape and the weight of it, um, which is called the hand of the fabric, like how it feels in the hand. This is a rayon and you can kind of see that it is a woven here. I'm not sure if you're gonna be able to see that, but you can see the woven texture in it and it has a little bit of sheen to it. So that is helpful. Aside from like cotton, which is obviously very coveted, rayon is a very coveted vintage fabric because of the brightness that they're able to achieve with the colors and it doesn't really fade in the way that cotton will fade over time. Because of the very nice and professional construction of, I'm trying to show you these buttonholes here, I'm going to say that this top was not handmade, that this was actually a manufactured blouse. But again, it doesn't have any name to it, no tags, uh, but I don't think that that hurts the value of the top at all. So for something like this, it is very on trend. You know, you've got the bow neck, it's either 40s or 50s. You've got the sort of gathered cuff, it's got the pearl buttons, buttons down the front. Um, it's a decent size, the finished hem. I'm going to say you would not be out of line asking somewhere around $60, $65 for this. You might more realistically get like $45 to $55, but um, if I were going to list this, which I am, I would probably list it as $65 to start. And then because I have sales in my Etsy shop, Etsy shop 
and I take offers on Poshmark, I would expect that maybe I would get a little bit less for this, but I think that the quality is really there and the condition that it's in, given that it is white and it doesn't really have any staining um, and all the buttons are present, I think that this is definitely a winner of a top. If you wanted to pinpoint more of whether this was 40s or whether this was 50s, one tip I can give you is to search for patterns from the era. So if you searched, you know, 1940s pussy bow blouse pattern, a very similar silhouette come up, you may be able to date this more toward the 40s, but you really have to pay attention very closely to like the cut of the neckline and the shape of the sleeve and um, you can't just assume that because you found a pussy bow blouse with a pattern from 1940s that this is 1940s. You really have to pay attention to the small details to see like what era this would be from. But I would say that with something like this most buyers aren't going to care as long as it's dated closely enough. Next up is another blouse. This is... I don't even know if I'm going to sell this. It probably won't fit me, but um, it is my favorite shade of purple and it is by a brand that I love, Ship and Shore. So Ship and Shore uh, is a vintage shirt making brand. I, I don't think I've ever found skirts um, or pants with this label, only tops, so I'm not entirely sure if they did other separates, but um, this is one of the few brands that actually did put fabric content, even though it was before the requirements for fabric content. So this top is from, I believe, about the 60s, and it's got that almost, like, Peter Pan collars are usually considered more rounded, but these pointed Peter Pan collars, um, do qualify anyway. You can kind of tell that it's older because of that longer sleeve inseam. This was very in vogue in like the 60s and the 50s. That's going to come more to like right here than up here. Um, and then you've got just this beautiful like pin tucking detail here all the way down the front. And this one does have a side slit and a finished hem so it can be worn outside of a skirt but mostly I'm going to guess that anyone who bought this top would probably tuck it in. The fabric is slightly sheer, it is slightly lightweight so it's more of like a spring summer top but I think that the color is versatile enough that this would be really great for someone um, who is a vintage lover in California um, who wants to wear more of those like fall colors but doesn't necessarily want the weight of fall fabrics. For these Ship and Shore tops I usually get somewhere between $35 to $45. Um, I think that if they are printed you might have a little bit better luck or if they have like a lot of detailing. It just sort of depends on the top but I would not probably price a ship and shore top above 55. So this is another blouse. Um, this one is either again 50s or 60s. It was a manufactured top. You can tell by the surged seams here which really lends it more toward like 60s than it does, like late 60s than it does 50s. But you could always do research on the label here which is very worn down um, but I believe it says Sybil I think C-Y-B-I-L I'm not entirely sure I would have to look it up um, the size tag is completely worn away and frayed and this top has back buttons, which was a very popular feature on tops and dresses in the 50s and 60s. And it's got this kind of like, almost like a jabot collar um, or a bow collar. You could 
tie it into a short bow or you could tie it into that like tie look that I had it as before and it's nice um, a good size this would probably fit me so I'll probably be able to model it and then this polka dot is actually I know it kind of looks brown but it is like a pea green color um, and it is slightly raised off of the fabric and this is a cotton top this one because it is sleeveless um, I would probably expect to get somewhere around 35 to 40 for this one um, possibly downwards of 30 so I think it really just depends on the modeling situation and how it ends up looking this is another top of the same sort of era you can see again those longer sleeves you've got this huge like doubled over cuff these are actually very nice because the fabric is on both sides so you can roll it up if you would like for more of like a cuffed look and a shorter sleeve it just really depends on the wearer's style and then it has that like pointed Peter Panny type of collar and then this I think is cute because it's got this pattern on both sides this is again this is going to be like a cotton polyester blend fabric it's very um like sheer and lightweight this one does have some stains down here I don't know if you'll be able to see it can kind of see them right in here uh, but it would need to be soaked and you can see the label here so this says raw mill of Boston and you see this tiny little circle with 34 in the middle that is the chest size so this was made to fit someone with a 34 inch chest Though the chest measurement is probably somewhere around 38 inches, the buttons will pull and pucker if the wearer has a chest that is too large. So the 34 is actually the size. You see this on vintage sweaters a lot, um, and you see this on blouses and tops up until about the 70s. So it's very common for like the 50s and the 60s um, to have that bust measurement on there. You can also see the construction of it. It's got a nice nipped in waist, which means that this would be more of one that you wore tucked in because you don't want a lot of fabric bunching up at the waist because it's very unflattering. So what they would do is they would taper it and tailor the fabric um, to have like a more nipped in waist so that it fit better underneath skirts. And this hem is what I was talking about I'm trying to there you go so you can see how there's like this surged hem down here at the bottom and it's kind of like a raw hem that's because this was meant to be worn tucked into something so I think that's it for the tops hopefully that gave you a little bit of an idea about like 50s 60s tops um, just what to look for kind of style traits what you might want to call out and for the next piece I have a lingerie set so this is a pinoir set and make sure you spell that right make sure you spell lingerie right so that people can find it when you're searching um, but it's just got this beautiful like lace overlay applique and it's got like more or less a pretty full skirt it's it's technically a line but it's got a lot of like body to it and then it's got these ties here on the back which you don't actually see very often but it gives it a very nice like flattering shape and you can kind of see the like empire large fitted waist here um, and so this is just a very beautiful set with brown embroidery and lace around the collar and then it comes with a bed jacket so it's a robe or a bed jacket um, sometimes bed jackets are like shorter thicker um, something to keep you warm while you're in bed but this one has just the nicest little like bell type of short sleeve and it's all ruffled and it's the palest prettiest pink 
Um, and the brand here on the back is Hollywood Vassaret by Munsing Wear. And again, it is a size 34. You can see it right there on this little tag. It's 100% nylon tricot. And yeah, so this set, these sets are really, really popular right now. So a lot of people are wearing this like sort of lingerie as outerwear right now, especially these bed jackets. Um, this one has like a little button here at the neckline that you could close up. Um, the other seller had this priced at 85 and I honestly don't think that's too far off. This is in beautiful condition. I sold a very stained pink bed jacket um, robe for over I think like 25 or 30 dollars just last month so with this being in very um, good condition and having both pieces to it um, I really think that this one could command 85 quite easily. When you are selling vintage loungewear or vintage lingerie a lot of it is going to be made out of nylon um, if it's got like that sort of sheer texture to it but it doesn't feel like silk and you can kind of see that it's more of like a woven almost like mesh then it's probably nylon even if it doesn't have a tag to it. Nylon can also be silky smooth. Um, it just depends on the type of nylon that is used. Okay, so that was the only lingerie or nightwear piece, although I'm going to be doing a separate um, lingerie little mini haul at some point to kind of go into more detail about it. And I might ask my friend uh, Breezy Von Breezy, who is also on Instagram. She sells a ton of vintage lingerie, so I might ask her on to kind of show us some of her pieces and share some of her knowledge with us and that will be sometime in the future but this is the next piece totally love this this is a plaid dress I'm gonna guess 1960s here it is a corduroy and it's just got this great print to it a lot of really great colors and it is more of like that sheath style and aside from the facings so when there is a little bit of fabric right under the collar of a vintage piece or around the armbands those are called a facing and it basically gives you this very nice seam on the outside without being a full lining for the garment um, so this has some cotton woven facings on the inside around the sleeves um, it does have a little bit of a split here, which I will mend in just a couple minutes. And this one is definitely a handmade piece. You can kind of tell, let's see if I can show you. This one also has a blind hem. So you can kind of see there's no direct real hemline, but you can see that it's slightly uneven. And if you look on the other side where they did the stitching to hold the fabric down so that there's not a raw edge here, you can see that it's not entirely straight. So this was probably done by a teen um, in the late 60s and I just think it's darling. I'm probably going to model this piece and hopefully I'll get somewhere around 40 45 for it it's a uh, plaid which is very popular in the fall and it's great colors and it's a good size and with the modeling i always try to ask just a little bit more for the pieces because i put the time in to model all right we have two more items left the next one is a vintage plaid skirt this one is the most gorgeous just like green brown and mustard plaid with a button front if this had pockets I would absolutely keep it 
um, because I think it is going to be my size and I just love plaid skirts but I have to have pockets so this one does not and it will be for sale this skirt is partially lined in the back you've got like this stiff acetate fabric um, and then you've got like this you know kind of scratchy like wool so you would probably want a slip with this one <laughs> here is the tag this is a 70s tag and a 70s size you can see here it's size 16 which is actually my size and vintage and you can see it has some care instructions here on this paper label and it does say dry clean only um, so yes I'm going to say that this is a 1970s skirt and these are like an easy $35 for me so anytime you have like a plaid wool skirt that has that a-line shape and it's got good colors 35 to 45 dollars is my usual listing price for those and i feel like that's very fair now obviously if you have holes in the piece or the colors are kind of drab then you might not get as much for it but i find that especially during the fall $35 is easy, easy, easy to get. All right, now the last piece is very special. This one will probably make quite a bit toward the amount that I paid for the entire lot. This is a skirt that the seller actually bought in London when she was living there, and her husband taught classical antiquities. So this skirt was just perfect and it has all of these Greek um, gods and goddesses or, you know, muses here um, within like this floral panel and then it is uh, this pale blue and white and gray. I have not been able to find much of anything on this skirt a lot of times you can find more examples of the fabric being used on other pieces but i have not been able to yet this is the label so it is rumont i think here so it might actually be french vintage i am not sure I will do more research on this piece but the reason that I wanted to show this is because anytime you find a novelty print border skirt those are big money for the most part especially um, certain prints like Disney or there's one with giraffes there's one with owls there's one with like um, a princess castle um, the there's one with Japanese gardens. These border print skirts can go for hundreds and hundreds of dollars. Some of the Disney ones, especially like the Lady and the Tramp one, um, they will go for four to six hundred dollars. And usually the best thing to do is to put them up on eBay for auction. Although there are specific Facebook groups for novelty and border print. Um, and so I am not sure what exactly I'm going to price this at. It is probably going to be between like 150 and 250. I might do an eBay auction. It really depends on what I can find for information on this skirt, but it is just beautiful. I wanted to show it to you and just call out border prints and novelty prints and there are people that will pay big big money for these skirts. Alright so the last thing that I want to tell you um, about the skirt is that if you are selling um, vintage skirts especially like circle skirts people might ask you for the sweep and what that means is essentially they want to know how long it is from one edge of the hem to the other and this is going to tell them how much fabric and yardage there is to work with um, 
and then if it is a full circle skirt if you lay it out like this one is on the floor it's going to go 360 degrees all the way around the waistband here in the middle so you can kind of see how it fans out and this means that you can get like a really nice big poof with it you can get a lot of petticoat underneath so that is this haul so let me know what your favorite piece was and let me know what information was the most helpful for you so that I know how to um, sort of steer these as I go and I do have many many more coming up because this is going to be a series so don't forget to give me a thumbs up if you like this content I do need videos to be successful for me to keep doing them so if you can share them on your social media or if you can just give me a thumbs up subscribe to my channel all of that is very helpful leaving comments is very helpful um, and hopefully I can continue to do these for you guys so thank you so much for watching and I hope that I'll see you next time bye